Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us again. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Leanne Donaldson. She's a psoriatic arthritis patient and also an advocate. She's joining us here to discuss her daily life and being a caregiver for her 10-year-old daughter, who's living with pediatric psoriatic arthritis. She's also going to talk a bit bit about the importance of additional treatment options for patients and their families. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Leanne. Hello, Neil. Thanks for having me. I understand that uh, you are a psoriatic arthritis patient. When were you diagnosed? Um, I was diagnosed um, right around 2015, Mm -hmm. uh, shortly after I had my third child. So I had three children, four years and under. So it was... Mm -hmm. Interesting. (laughs) Explain to our listeners what psoriatic arthritis is as opposed to other types of of the condition. Um, Psoriatic arthritis is interesting in that it does have the name arthritis in its title, but it's actually an autoimmune disease. Mm. And um, different from rheumatoid arthritis in that it also tends to have um, some skin rashes, Mm -hmm. psoriasis, where it's typically would would start and how it's related. But sometimes I think it, it does get a misnomer in that people often confuse it with osteoarthritis, which is a different type. So psoriatic arthritis is actually an autoimmune disease where it does tend to attack um, joints, organs, and um, often characterized by the psoriasis rash as well. Were you diagnosed properly initially, or were there some hit and miss uh, as you were trying to find out what the problem was? Um, honestly, I was. I was. It took me a long time to reach diagnosis. Actually, um, I. I actually believe that my symptoms probably began in my early twenties, mm-hmm. which would have been twenty years before my actual diagnosis, um, or close to that. But um, my first actual noticeable symptom that sent me um, straight to the doctor was hearing loss, Mm. which (laughs) you hear, you know, arthritis and you don't think hearing loss, but um, what had happened was my, my body was actually attacking my um, ear canal. Mm -hmm. So when you have an autoimmune arthritis, basically, um, joints, organs, any of um, tendons, they're all kind of up for grabs. Mm-hmm. You know, your body can choose to attack any of them. And in my case, it just happened to be my, no- my most noticeable one was my ears because I had three young children at the time. So the fatigue was passed off as, you know, motherhood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, the morning aches and pains was, oh, I only got three hours of sleep. And, you know, I was still teaching full time. So I had I was I was teaching middle school and I had three children, very, very young at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it was easy to write off a lot of those first aches and pains as, you know, obviously Mm -hmm. other things. Um, and it's really hard to find um, psoriatic arthritis by nature tends to be pretty difficult to diagnose on its own because there aren't really true um, diagnostic like blood work. You can't go and get a blood test that says yes or no, you have psoriatic arthritis. So my case in particular was very challenging. Plus, we did not know I was adopted. Mm. So from a genetic history, they didn't have that standpoint to go off of as well either. So, Was your daughter diagnosed due to DNA testing or was it similar? You know, there were symptoms and you said, hey, there's a problem. Let's go check it out. And which one of your three children is is this? Evelyn is actually my middle child. Okay. okay. Um, my And um, she, uh, her diagnosis journey was a little easier, but... It's hard because with children, you know, there's always a normal amount of growing what they what they write off as growing, pain, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so her pediatrician in particular, I really like the relationship that we have with her because I am te- I tend to be middle of the road. I don't want to overreact and think that every ache and pain my children have must be arthritis. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I just, I want to be careful, but not cautious, but not um, overly so. How does being a, a patient and a caregiver, I guess, coincide, overlap? Normally, sometimes the person who's the caregiver has no inkling of what the patient is going through, but that's not the case with you and your daughter. Yeah, yeah. And in some ways, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, no one wants their child uh, to be sick or have a disease, but I feel like that if I can model for her the best possible ways to manage it, And to show her that there are things that are within our control to to manage the disease and try and maintain a positive attitude and more than anything, learn to listen to her body. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do that because I've failed so so tragically Mm. trying to do it. So I can help her through that journey and understand it better. So in that sense, I try to remind myself that it's a blessing, especially as she starts to enter those preteen tween years where mom knows nothing. And I'm a, you know, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All, everything I, you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about because, you know, suddenly she's a teenager and I don't get it. So I like that we, we do share this in common and I can speak from experience to her and she can understand Talk about the importance of having a positive relationship with your health care provider in addition to the positive relationship that you have with your daughter. Yeah, I think that um, many times it's such a struggle to find or to land on a psoriatic arthritis diagnosis that it, be, it can become easy to be uh, disgruntled as you go through the doctors and you feel like... Um, your healthcare provider maybe doesn't listen to you or doesn't take your concerns seriously. And so finding and nourishing a positive relationship with your healthcare provider can make all the difference in terms of being able to live as well as possible and manage your disease, Uh, having that open dialogue. It's my understanding that there are some new therapies such as Stellara that uh, have been approved to treat pediatric psoriatic arthritis. What does having additional treatment options available mean for families like yours who are impacted by psoriatic arthritis? The the most important thing, I think, in terms of having new treatment options is that everybody's um, individual bodies respond differently to different types of therapy. Mm-hmm. There's no one-size-fits-all treatment, okay? So, in order to have more options means you can better treat more people. And one of the, I, I will never forget in one of the first conversations I had with my daughter's pediatric rheumatologist was about the limited number of options that were available at the time. Every single one more that we have can better help additional children, which honestly is is everything. (laughs) What's the one thing that you'd like other parents to know about caring for a child with pediatric psoriatic arthritis? I think more than anything that the one thing I want them to know is to speak with their doctors and try and make sure you come up with a comprehensive treatment plan that is right for your child. And don't be afraid to be an informed advocate and um, to be able to have that open conversation and dialogue with their um, pediatric rheumatologist. I understand that you are also a blogger. Would you give us a a web address where we can uh, learn more about you and your advocacy? Yes, I blog at smilesandsundays.com. Thank you so much for your time, Leanne. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Leanne Donaldson. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.